about to gavel in for legislative work this afternoon. Today, members are expected to consider a bill creating an annual academic competition in science, technology, engineering, and math in each congressional district. Votes are expected around 2.30. And now live to the House floor here on C-SPAN as members gavel in. Uh, Mr. Speaker, thank you, and I would ask unanimous consent that all members have five legislative days to ex revise and extend the remarks on the House uh, resolution. Without objection. And I would yield myself as much time as I may consume. Sure. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in very strong support of H.R. Resolution 77 to establish an academic competition that promotes innovation among students from across the country in the science, technology, engineering, and math, or the STEM fields, as they are called. This uh, program will be modeled, Mr. Speaker, after the Congressional Art Competition. This academic congressional competition will be a nationwide STEM innovation competition for participating students in every congressional district. Each year, students will submit STEM projects or programs to their representatives for consideration. Representatives, members of Congress, will then select the winning submissions that will be recognized in Washington, D.C. each year. The initial focus of this competition will be software applications. Submissions will include, likely include smartphone apps, management software programs, and social media technologies. STEM positions are among the fastest growing occupations. Unfortunately, organizations are having a difficult time filling these, filling these positions with qualified and diverse candidates. At least half the growth in the U.S. gross domestic product over the last 50 years has been due to science and engineering. Yet the United States, Mr. Speaker, unfortunately, is losing its competitive edge in those fields. According to a 2010 National Academies report, the United States ranks 27th among developed countries in the proportion of college students earning bachelor's degrees in science or engineering. As I mentioned, it's our intent to model this program after the Artistic Discovery Competition. And I would say, Mr. Speaker, since my arrival here in Congress, I've just marveled at the incredible abilities, the talents, the creativity of young artists from my district. And I've certainly been honored to display the winning submission here in the Capitol Building. I truly believe that the Artistic Discovery has worked to inspire those artists to really hone their skills and advance their creativity. And this STEM competition, this program today that we're talking about, could do so much uh, more of the same, and perhaps to help us discover the, ne the next uh, Stephen Jobs or Bill Gates. This would not only help our young people to thrive, but also advance our entire economy. A study by the President's Council of Advisors in Science and Technology found that over the next decade, quote, economic forecasts point to the need for producing approximately one million more college graduates in STEM fields than expected, unquote. We are nowhere near, Mr. Speaker, meeting that goal, and this competition would be a no-cost way to further interest in the field. Additionally, fewer than one-third of the eighth graders in the United States show proficiency in science and mathematics. Actually, only nine states allow computer science courses to count toward high school graduation requirements. I know we can do better than that. We can help America's schools to do more to prepare our, st our children in the STEM fields. We can help to stimulate the workforce by helping America's young people not only to be prepared, but to ably fill STEM jobs in our, county, in our economy as they are created. It's vital to our economy and to our future that America remain competitive in this growing field. We can encourage and embrace STEM innovation through this bipartisan academic competition. In an ever-competitive global economy, I know that America's young people can be the world's greatest source of innovation and creativity. We can improve our nation's economy and help provide countless of our children great opportunities in the future by encouraging their imaginations, by honoring their hard work. If there are STEM jobs available, we make every effort to ensure that American young people fill these positions. This competition will help students see the value of STEM fields and engage them with the topics throughout their lives. We also need to help students who are interested in science and engineering maintain that interest so that they can become scientists and engineers. Encouraging greater innovation and participation in STEM fields will help our students and again help our nation to succeed in the future. We know all too well how difficult our economy has been in recent years, but even in this tough economy, a lot of these tech industries have flourished. It's important to empower our young people with the necessary tools to succeed when it comes time for them to enter the labor force. The action that we take today could help empower the next generation because this competition will offer the opportunity for students to expand their horizons and potentially find 
find interest or maintain their interest in one of our economy's fastest growing occupations. We can improve our students' academic achievement in education in hopes of preparing them for these opportunities in their future. As former U.S. Secretary of Education Bill Bennett has said, quote, as a nation, we simply must get this message to schools, businesses, corporations, state departments of education, governors, and beyond. STEM education is an urgent need for our nation. We cannot continue to graduate students ill-prepared for our nation's economic necessities on their own, unquote. Mr. Speaker, we believe that this proposed academic competition will inspire and encourage young innovators and better equip our youth to compete in today's global economy. Far too often, I would note, this House seems to be unable to come to agreement on ways to solve America's challenges, and I know on this issue we all agree this is a bipartisan effort. We all love our children. We all want them to succeed. We want them to reach their full potential, and we certainly want to honor their hard work as they reach toward a brighter future. So I would urge all of my colleagues, Mr. Speaker, to join me in supporting this small step toward that brighter future. I reserve the balance of my time. General, I reserve. The gentleman from Pennsylvania is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to thank Chairman Miller and his staff for working in a bipartisan fashion on this legislation. As the Chairman mentioned, we created this competition so members help promote STEM education in a way that has direct impact on their, have direct impact on their constituents. It is the very type of learning that will be essential to continue revitalizing our nation's economy. The time and energy we invest now in advancing STEM education will only strengthen our nation's economic posture in the future. This competition is one, one small way to do that. I look forward to continue working with the Chairman as we develop regulations for this program and implement this competition. And with that, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves. Gentleman from Michigan. Mr. Speaker, I'm proud to yield uh, one minute to uh, the distinguished majority leader, the gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Cantor, who has been a principal force and advocate for this particular piece of legislation in the STEM. Gentleman. Uh, thanks, Speaker. For one minute. I, th I thank the uh, gentlelady from Michigan. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise today in support of the House's effort to promote entrepreneurship and innovation through a new nationwide congressional academic competition focused on science, technology, engineering, and math. From Robert Noyce to Sergey Brin, America has long been at the forefront of the digital revolution. Yet the United States faces an increasing challenge in terms of competitiveness and the opportunities available to future generations. This competition will provide a unique opportunity for America's high school and college students in each congressional district to showcase their capabilities and creativity and build a framework for American success. Each year, this competition will bring communities together with their member of Congress to recognize the importance of innovation and motivate students to pursue their ideas, take risks, and put forward innovative solutions. By challenging students to explore the importance of computer science in their everyday lives, we hope that this competition will help empower them to use their creativity to code for a more prosperous and innovative community. This competition will initially focus on developing applications for mobile, tablet, and computer platforms, reviewed by community leaders and entrepreneurs in these fields. However, given that technology rapidly changes over time, the competition has been designed with the ability to evolve for the future. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank Chairman Miller, Ranking Member Brady, and their staffs for their hard work in making this program possible. It'll be exciting to see the kinds of advancements and breakthroughs students will come up with across the country. I look forward to the success of the Congressional Academic Competition for years to come and encourage my colleagues to support this effort to inspire the next generation of American innovators. Now I yield back. The gentleman from Virginia yields back. The gentleman from Pennsylvania. Mr. Chairman, it's my pleasure to yield two minutes to the gentlelady from California, Anna Eshoo. The gentlelady from California is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the uh, uh, ranking member. 
uh, for recognizing me. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I rise today in support of the uh, Academic Competition Resolution of uh, 2013, uh, which is really the first step toward establishing a mobile apps contest for students across America, which I find very, very exciting. Building on the success of the uh, Congressional Arts Competition, which for more than 30 years has recognized and encouraged artistic talent among our nation's uh, youth, an apps competition will foster interest in STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and math which is just what our country needs to prepare for our future. According to the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology, in the next decade there will be approximately 8.5 million STEM opportunities, job opportunities, but during the same time, it's projected we'll face a shortage of 1 million STEM graduates. We need to address this mismatch by encouraging our children's innate curiosity and creativity. And what better way to do this than through a mobile apps competition? From mobile uh, medical apps that can revolutionize the way we uh, seek and receive health care, to apps that uh, enable video conferencing and the streaming of online video, our lives have been changed forever by the mobility and, and the uh, economic impact that these app, uh, apps have provided. Uh, studies show the app economy has already created approximately 150,000 jobs in my state of California alone and over a half a million jobs nationwide. So there's a huge economic benefit already, but we need to leverage this. So I thank Chairwoman Miller, I thank the ranking member of the committee, uh, and I want to acknowledge my wonderful uh, colleague, uh, Chairman Goodlett, um, who uh, uh, heads up the uh, House uh, Congressional Internet Caucus, and I'm proud to be a co-chair with him. Uh, and uh, uh, we will look forward to working with the committee to ensure that the success of this competition uh, and the continued growth of the app marketplace takes place. Yield back. I Thank you. Yields back. Gentleman from Michigan. Mr. Speaker, I would yield two minutes to the gentleman from New York, Mr. Hanna, who is also uh, the distinguished co-chair of the STEM Education Caucus. The gentleman, Thank you. The gentleman from New York is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in support of this resolution and commend Chairwoman Miller and Ranking Member Brady for offering this thoughtful legislation. As co-chair of the STEM Education Caucus, I'm grateful the House has brought forth this issue, which is critical to American economic competitiveness. In order to rebuild our middle class, increase our standard of living, and ensure that the 21st century is another prosperous American century, one of the most important things Congress can do is prioritize science, technology, engineering, and math. I'm a member of the Joint Economic Committee, which has reported last year that STEM fields spur economic growth through innovation in value-added, tradable goods. We also know that STEM unemployment rates are half of the, other, of the normal unemployment rate. STEM pay salaries are double what other salaries are for non-STEM work. Putting people po solidly in the middle class creates taxpayers, which grows our economy and helps control our debt. Ensuring that the, the increasingly elusive American dream is still atta attainable. Mr. Speaker, this resolution to establish academic STEM competitions in each of our districts is a great way to highlight the importance of educating our youth in fields which are so necessary to the future competitiveness of our nation. I urge my colleagues to support this important legislation, and I look forward to this House continuing to find bipartisan ways to prioritize science, technology, engineering, and math education. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back, the gentleman from Pennsylvania. Mr. Chairman, let me now yield two minutes to the gentleman from uh, New Jersey, Mr. Andrews. The gentleman from New Jersey is recognized for two minutes. I ask unanimous consent to revise and extend my remarks. Without objection. I, uh, I congratulate the chairwoman and my friend Mr. Brady for bringing to the floor very good legislation that recognizes the value of the best and brightest young Americans competing in the fields of uh, math, science, and innovation. But America is not going to compete very well if we don't solve the budget sequester that surrounds us here today. We're in a global economic competition where we will fall behind if we do not act by this Friday. 
Beginning this Friday, according to economists, a conservative estimate of the number of jobs lost in our country will be 750,000 jobs. There are those who believe that the job loss may exceed 2 million jobs. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the House, there is a proposal in the well before the House that would postpone this job loss. Mr. Van Hollen has offered a proposal that uh, would postpone the sequester and save these jobs, but still reduce our deficit by cutting subsidies to huge oil companies who do not need those subsidies, by cutting uh, subsidies to huge agribusinesses who do not need those subsidies, by saying that people who make more than $2 million a year should pay a rate of taxation that does not let them exploit loopholes and other deductions. To date, with the sequester looming, the majority in this House has done nothing to address this problem. Not one bill, not one hour, not one debate, not one vote. So we have an alternative. And with this looming problem facing the people of the country, I believe that should be the order of business of the House today. Mr. Van Hollen's bill would end the sequester and reduce the deficit. So I therefore ask unanimous consent that the House bring up H.R. 699 at this time. Under the guidelines consistently issued by successive speaker, as, pay, as recorded on page 749 of the House Rules Manual, the chair is constrained not to entertain the gentleman's request unless it has been cleared by the bipartisan floor and committee leaderships. Parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Speaker. State your inquiry. Is the result of the chair's ruling that the House will not be able to vote on a bill to end the sequester at this time? The chair cannot entertain the gentleman's unanimous consent request at this time. Thank you. The gentlelady from Michigan. Mr. Speaker, I would yield three minutes to the gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Goodluck. He's the distinguished chairman of the Committee on the Judiciary as well as the chair of the Internet Caucus and is the co-sponsor of this resolution. The gentleman from Virginia is recognized for three minutes. I thank uh, Chairman Miller for bringing this uh, legislation forward and for the hard work of both herself and Congressman Brady on this issue, and I rise in support of the Academic Competition Resolution of 2013. This resolution establishes an academic competition in the fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, STEM, which shall be held each year among students in each congressional district and allows the Committee on House Administration to prescribe the regulations that will govern this competition. This resolution will allow the Congressional Internet Caucus the ability to create the first Congressional App Challenge. Modeled after the Congressional Art Competition, the Congressional App Challenge promotes STEM learning and innovation by recognizing and incentivizing America's young programming talent. In the 17 years since the formation of the Congressional Internet Caucus, technology policy issues ranging from cybersecurity and intellectual property have gained more prominence with each passing Congress. This challenge allows members to experience the technology, innovation, and entrepreneurship that take place on a daily basis in their own districts. This firsthand knowledge will be able to serve as a resource to members as they consider legislation dealing with technology issues. The competition will motivate our young people to further pursue programming and other technology-related educational opportunities. It will also enable them to showcase their programming skills on a national stage while at the same time promoting the value of STEM education and careers. I want to thank the Chair of the Committee on House Administration, Congresswoman Miller, and Ranking Member Congressman Brady for bringing this resolution to the floor, and I look forward to working with them to craft regulations that will make the Congressional App Contest a huge success to both members and our constituents. I also look forward to working with my Congressional Internet Caucus co-chair, the gentlewoman from California, Mrs. Eshoo, in bringing this competition to fruition, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman from Virginia yields back. The gentleman from Pennsylvania. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to yield two minutes from the gentleman from California, Mr. Miller. The gentleman from California is recognized for two minutes. I thank the gentleman for yielding me this time, and I, I rise in support of House Resolution 77, and I commend the chair of the committee and the ranking member for bringing this to the floor, and I hope that all of our colleagues will, will 
participate in this competition uh, for students in STEM subjects to create these apps and to, to further, hopefully, their careers in STEM. But I must tell you, Mr. Chairman, that I'm also deeply worried uh, that our hopes to increase the number of students who will participate in STEM education and become part of the STEM, STEM uh, uh, careers that are available to them that this nation so desperately needs could all be for naught, this resolution and all of our efforts, if on Friday we are not able to set aside the sequester and, and make a balanced proposal for, to reduce the deficit and to provide for the ongoing needs of this, uh, of this nation. Right now, if we do nothing between now and Friday, there will be a $740 million cut to Title I, impacting nearly one, over 1 million students, low-income students, and 9,000 teachers and staff jobs. Those are the people that we want to encourage to go into STEM. Those are the very same students that have a one in seven chance of having a, a qualified teacher teach them mathematics or sciences in their schools. So the very population that you're trying to encourage will have less of a chance because of sequestration. Over $600 million cut for students with di disabilities and eliminating some 7,800 teacher jobs and staff with respect to those, with those students. For those students who are trying to acquire the English language so they can participate in the STEM careers and STEM academics, nearly 210,000 children and 450 teachers would be eliminated by the sequestration. And the same goes through with, with community learning centers, where it's an opportunity to expose these students after school in additional time to these careers, to these opportunities, to the applications, and to the websites that are available to them that they can't use during class time. But finally, there's, there's even a, a, a more direct harm that will be done by sequestration. And that is that the National Science Foundation would issue nearly 1,000 fewer research grants and awards impacting an estimated 12,000 scientists and students and curtailing critical scientific research. That's the scientific research that builds this nation. And for that reason, I ask unanimous consent that the House now take up H.R. 699, a balanced approach introduced by Mr. Van Hollen to replace the sequestration and save jobs and avoid these cuts in, in education that are so desperately needed. Under the guidelines consistently issued by successive speakers, as recorded on page 749 of the House Rules Manual, the chair is constrained not to entertain the gentleman's request unless it has been cleared by the bipartisan floor and committee leaderships. Parliamentary inquiry. State your inquiry. Mr. Chair, does that mean that we will not be taking up sequestration between now and Friday so that we can get rid of the uh, sequestration with, with a balanced plan? The not, not going to answer. The gentleman has not stated a proper parliamentary inquiry. Thank you. The lady from Michigan. Mr. Speaker, I have no further speakers at this time, but I would reserve the balance of my time. If my uh, ranking member would like to close. General from Pennsylvania. Make his Thank final you. statements. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, yes, uh, I'd just like to also deviate for a moment or two on, the, on, on our issue here is that tomorrow we, we will be honoring Rosa Parks with a statue. And as our, our Chairman Miller can start to understand, being the chairman of the committee, we won't get an opportunity to, uh, to say anything, but it is our committee that had this happen. And uh, I would like to thank Mr. Lundgren, the former chairman and ranking member of our committee. Because of that, we will be honoring Rosa Parks in the statutory hall tomorrow, which we would not, again, have a chance to say that. And I would like to thank also Jesse Jackson. Without his uh, efforts every single day, every week, pushing to have that statue done, uh, it would not be, uh, it, we would not be in that hall tomorrow honoring her. So I need to give credit where credit belongs. I appreciate the moment to be able to say that. Again, I wish to thank the chair for her cooperation on this bill. I look forward to working with her as we implement the program's regulations. And with that, I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman from Michigan. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I uh, first of all would like to associate myself with the re uh, remarks about uh, Rosa Parks that uh, my ranking member just made. I think about uh, uh, one person uh, with that act of courage uh, literally changing a nation, uh, and uh, it's a remarkable thing. And we were very proud in Michigan that she uh, came to be a resident of Michigan in her final years, where she served, as you can imagine, so extraordinarily well and inspired, so uh, inspiring to uh, so many people. And it's certainly uh, entirely appropriate uh, that uh, her uh, statue to her uh, takes a place in Statuary Hall amongst presidents and and, uh, and other uh, national leaders. And so uh, we're all looking forward to tomorrow to that unveiling of her statute. Uh, but getting back to the House resolution that we have today, uh, Mr. Speaker, I would just say in closing that uh, certainly uh, if America wants to remain competitive, we have to encourage uh, and embrace innovation, innovation in the STEM fields. And uh, as all of the various speakers have uh, mentioned today, this, uh, this program 
Uh, I'm very excited about it. Uh, we tried to, I have to tell you in full transparency, five years ago I didn't even know what an app was. Now it's part of the nomenclature. You've got an app store and there's apps for all kinds of things and, uh, and these kids, when you get a chance to go into these high schools and talk to them, have ideas for apps doing all kinds of things. And so I think that uh, we've, we're going to try to design this program to be technology neutral. So whether it's a smartphone or a website or a laptop, laptop or uh, any kind of software, uh, and then sort of leave it open because the technology is just changing so, uh, so rapid fire as well. And we've thought about, uh, for instance, in my district, I've talked to my staff about how we would have a panel of judges uh, that are uh, very uh, uh, savvy on all of these things. You could use computer science teachers to be part of the judging panel, people from industry, uh, academics, uh, what have you. And, uh, and then I think uh, hopefully as, as some of the uh, students come forward, whether they win or not, uh, that we would have some sort of a mentoring program as well where uh, uh, folks from the industry, from the uh, academics, uh, in the sciences, uh, in the STEM programs, could, uh, in the fields, could talk to these uh, students about uh, opportunities, job po possibilities, uh, et cetera. So I do think that this uh, resolution that we're passing today, uh, again, in a bipartisan way, is a very, uh, uh, very important uh, and does have the ability in, uh, to really impact in a very positive way. Uh, and with that, uh, I, I have no further requests for time. So I would urge my colleagues to support the legislation. I yield back the balance of my time, Mr. Speaker. The gentlelady yields back. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and agree to House Resolution 77? Those in favor, say aye. Those opposed, no. And the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative. Mr. Speaker. General on, Lady from Michigan. On this, I ask for a recorded vote. The General Lady asked for the yeas and nays. I ask for the yeas and nays. The na yeas and nays have been requested. All those in favor of taking this vote by the yeas and nays will rise and remain standing until counted. A sufficient number having then arisen, the yeas and nays are ordered. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, further proceedings on this question will be postponed. Pursuant to Clause 12A of Rule 1, the House will stand in recess subject to the call of the chair. So the House has gone into recess as they've been debating a bill creating an annual academic competition in science, technology, engineering, and math in each congressional district. Members are expected to return for votes on the bill this afternoon at about 3 p.m. Eastern. Of course, we'll have live coverage. Tomorrow, the House will take up violence against women legislation that expired in 2011. The House bill would make several changes to the bill the Senate passed earlier this month. Again, live coverage of the House when members return today at here on C-SPAN. That'll be at 3 p.m. Eastern. The Senate has been uh, 